Welcome to our English. I am Priscilla Ramcharan here in the United States, and I am super excited to have our amazing guest. Please introduce yourself. Hello, everyone. My name is Denise Garrido, and I am Mrs. Galaxy Canada 2020-2021. Woohoo! <laughs> Where are you from? So I'm from... Uh, Toronto, actually north of Toronto, so Ontario, Canada, and uh, today is a beautiful rainy spring day, so I, I'm enjoying your background right now with the bright blue sky. <laughs> Thank you so much, and I invite you to jump in. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> Well, thank you so much and welcome. I'm so happy to have you here. You are gorgeous. Your personality is so amazing. We were chatting before and we couldn't stop. <laughs> I know, but like we were saying, fellow fire signs. That's right. <laughs> we're we're so, <laughs> Absolutely. Well, tell me, what is your inspiration to do your work as a pageant lady? So my inspiration in terms of uh, participating in pageantry, it's kind of like inspiration um, for participating in any type of extracurricular. It's an opportunity to work on yourself, to get out of a comfort zone prior to doing pageantry. And also just like a side note, I'm also a third degree black belt in Taekwondo. And uh, I got into that because I was actually eight years old when I started and I found out that my parents were going to put my brother and I'm like, wait a second, I'm a girl. I need it even more than he does. That's so, right. Exactly. And at first they were like, oh, no, no, you're doing piano. You're fine. You've got other extracurriculars. And I'm like, no, no. And so eventually I convinced them, right? You know, those hard headed little girl being like, please, please. So um, I got to do Taekwondo and even doing a martial art. Like I was very quiet. I was, I was an introvert um, and I still have my introvert moments right where I just kind of want to be like in my little, own little bubble and um, at one point you like in martial arts you have to start teaching other students this is like part of the requirements before you're even allowed to test for a black stripe or black belt Ooh. and so it was so scary for me because even though and get this I was going to be teaching three to six year olds and I was <laughs> so scared I was just like oh my goodness like like are they going to laugh at me are they going to like me and how am I going to handle this and it's like they're children like they're looking up to you for like um for the advice and, and to direct them and so um yeah so that's what Taekwondo did for me it helped bring me out of my shell and then with pageantry it was like the next level of that because that's like you're on a stage, it's just you, and you have to show confidence and just, you know, like radiate your smile and, and get the judges and the audience to, to be drawn into you. And so it, it was really a journey of like bringing me out of my shell and there's that adrenaline rush. And then once you do one, you're just like, oh, I kind of want the adrenaline rush again. And then you just kind of go and do another one. We call it the pageant bug. You, you catch it after the first one. And then you're like, Ooh, I want to try another one again. It, it's definitely an, an, an adrenaline rush. So inspiration for pageantry is, um, it's just the, the self-development that you get out of it, but also the people you meet along the way. Another cool side note. One of my first roommates in some of the earlier pageants I did uh -huh. um, is now a, MD, so a doctor, a PhD, and works, does like NASA training. Wow. So like preparing <laughs> to go on like a mission to, I don't even know where. So she's just like the coolest person ever. So you don't know who you're going to meet, right? We're all at these stages in our lives where we're just like, we're trying things, where we're starting different careers or we're doing different studies, but you never know where that relationship will blossom into later on. And there's cases of, you know, contestants that really get along and then they're like at each other's weddings. And so there's just so many positives that I feel you get out of it. So my inspiration for pageantry is that is just you meet people, you have experiences, you and you grow as a person. I love that. I love that. That is wonderful. And self development is so important. Understanding yourself, especially under pressure. You know, yeah. you have a goal here. Your goal is to, like you said, impress the judges and you know show your your uh, strengths as well. So that's really really wonderful. And then taking care of yourself. You know, bringing your best self forward. That's amazing. Yes. Awesome. And then what is your motivation? 
So my motivation, um, so my motivation now um, as a Mrs. title holder is, is my son. So something like really switched after having um, my baby and obviously your whole world becomes like this little child. And, and so the motivation with, you know, being part of a pageant now as a mother is to be an example to him that I have like a strong, powerful mom and she's, she will strive for things that are out of the norm, right? Not everyone goes and tries out for a pageant. So, you know, she tries these different things. She challenges herself. And then with the title does amazing things with it, uses the title as a platform to, to draw smiles to other people or, or to make a difference. So it, it's being the role model now for Theo. I love that Theo is in great hands. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, you are so right. You know, motherhood really brings out that mama lion and lioness yes. in you. And, you know, you want to strive to be a great role model and to show them that no matter what you do, uh, it doesn't have to be exactly like me, but you can still follow your passions, follow your dreams and be great at it. Yes. And exactly. make people smile. <laughs> awesome. So what are your goals for the future? So my goals for the future, um, aside from like being very family focused and, you know, if that means like maybe, you know, another child, um, growing the family um, and just kind of doing whatever I can to continue to continue um, self-developing myself and not just like self-developing and in terms of um, like career, but uh, but educational self development. I feel like well, actually, perfect example. So one of the things I've been doing with my title is um, I've been um, doing these like science classes for mm -hmm. for kids online. Like it's part of like these different uh, organizations. One is called like uh, Wonderful Exchange Kids, and so every month I write an article for. Yeah. For this online magazine for kids and uh and i'm like the science queen because i have a science background so i always do like nice. a science article and so one of the articles that i did was about um uh vision oh and the importance of light to to kind of uh get your circadian rhythm in tune right our, our natural body clock and you know like so for vision there's things in your eyes called rods and cones and that's what you learn about in school but there's another pigment in eyes that was discovered after I graduated called like um, these uh, ganglion cells that are sensitive to light and, and, and when light hits them, it causes melatonin, you know, melatonin is that sleep hormone that makes you feel sleepy. Anyhow, this was all discovered after the fact. So it's just being this lifelong learner and knowing that you don't always know everything that, um, you know, the moment you think you know everything, that's it. Like you're just, you're done because you're no longer developing. If you're not growing, there's like a quote, if you're not growing, you're dying. You have to constantly be working on improving yourself. And, and again, that's also part of a, a, the example that I want to show Theo is that don't think you always know it all because there's always more information always coming out. Science has never settled on anything. Have an open mind. Um, yeah. So that, that, those are my plans for the future is just constant development and being open-minded actually yeah my ultimate goal is to always have an open mind to just always be open to to learning new things that what i thought was true could be wrong and be okay with that absolutely absolutely you are a plethora of information I may have to pick your science brain for my students. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I love it. Awesome. Really <laughs> wonderful answer. And you're absolutely right. You know, we always say, oh, if I had known then what I know now, you know, things would be so different. But you weren't this person then. Exactly. You didn't know this for a reason. So the journey is the learning process, the open-minded process, the accepting process. You know, there's so many uh, people out there that they need to be heard. They want to be listened to. They want to be cared for. Um, but in uh, the same sense, you want to teach them how to do that for themselves and be independent self-caregivers, uh, independent learners. So it's really beautiful. 
Thank Great you. job. <laughs> and what is your final message for our viewers? My final message is, um, so actually, you know what, there's a, a quote I used like several years ago that, you know, in every storm cloud, there is a silver lining. And so right now with everything that's going on in the world, um, you know, like life is shut down for so many people, you know, stuck at home, we can't really see, see our friends like we used to. With every storm cloud, there is a silver lining. So what can we do with this time? What can we do? What are other ways that we could still be connecting with each other and phone calls? I know like even reaching out online, but phone calls, the power of hearing someone else's voice and having that conversation, that live, you know, interaction, or if they have the ability to go and have a camera conversation, even more powerful, it's even closer to that real thing. More and more people right now are feeling lonely, feeling because of the isolation, especially if they live alone. I, I'm so fortunate that I'm living with my family. But uh, reach out for people, reach out to people, and you can really just change their day and change their week. And, and those little efforts not only help them, but it does help you too, right? You feel good, and that it, it's it's a win win for everyone. So l let's look for for the uh, the little ray of sunshine in the storm cloud, and 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 look for the positive things and how we could reconnect with people. I found because of of connecting with different people i've really solidified certain friendships and then other ones i've kind of realized that you know what maybe i'm not as um um as close to as what i thought to and and that's good it, it just helps me realize that i i've become more aware of what's important in a friendship for me and so absolutely being that as that opportunity if it comes let it if it goes let it right exactly and exactly. just let the energies be that's what i've learned <laughs> yep Yep, Amazing. This was wonderful. Thank you so much for being here. I'm going to gift you a complimentary PDF of my book, Mindset to Self Love, and do share. Thank um, you. Yes, and let me know how you enjoy it. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. I'm looking forward to reading it. For sure. So thank you so much again. It was lovely to have you and your beautiful self. Good luck with your future endeavors. Thank you. Thank You're you. welcome. Say bye. Bye. <laughs> Take care.